Hungary National Park is known as the Redwoods of the East. The canopy here averages over 130 feet tall, making it not only one of the tallest forests in the United States, but one of the tallest broadleaf forests anywhere in the world. Let me say that again. One of the tallest forests in the world can be found in Congaree National Park. Unlike the towering redwoods of California, however, Congaree's canopy isn't occupied by a single species, but rather a massive assemblage of giants that all benefit from Congaree's unique ecosystem. Contrary to popular belief, that ecosystem is not a swamp. Actually, when Congaree was first protected back in 1976, it was known as Congaree Swamp National Monument. But that's actually a bit of a misnomer. The Congaree ecosystem isn't a swamp at all. It's actually what's known as a bottomland forest or a floodplain forest. This type of forest used to be incredibly abundant all throughout the southeastern United States along rivers just like the Congaree. But sadly, most of them were logged and drained for agriculture and urban development. In fact, Congaree National Park now protects the largest remaining example of old growth hardwood bottomland forest left in North America. Out of the estimated 52 million acres of floodplain forest that used to cover the southeastern United States, Congaree's 27,000 acres are the last large remnants of this once vast ecosystem. And it's those 27,000 acres, along with their floodplain dynamics, that are responsible for the super tall tree canopy that Congaree National Park is known for. Here's how it all works. First of all, the Congaree watershed is extraordinarily big. The Congaree River itself is formed in downtown Columbia, South Carolina, just upstream of the park at the confluence of the Saluda and Broad Rivers. The Congaree then meets the Watery River and forms the Santee River at the eastern edge of the National Park boundary. All in all, this river system drains over 14,000 square miles, nearly 9 million acres. So we're talking about a lot of water here. Water is a key component of the Congaree ecosystem. Because every so often, when there's a lot of rain in the upper reaches of that watershed, by the time it makes its way down to the park, the Congaree River cannot be contained to its normal river channel. It overflows its banks and floods the surrounding forest. This is the forest that makes up most of Congaree National Park. That is why it is known as a floodplain forest. It lies in the floodplain of the Congaree River. Now, when these floods happen, about 90% of the park is underwater, including most of the trail system. Somewhat inconvenient for us as visitors, but if you take away one thing from this video, let it be this. The flooding of the Congaree River is the single most important ecological process that occurs in Congaree National Park. And it is the reason for the incredible amounts of biodiversity this park has to offer and the reason so many trees here grow so tall because as these floodwaters inundate the forest, which they do roughly 10 times per year, they bring with them all the nutrients and sediment that the Congaree River is carrying. These nutrients and sediments are then deposited on the forest floor as the floodwaters recede, leaving behind an incredibly nutritious soil that the trees here thrive in. Combine this with the fact that Congaree is located in a relatively temperate environment and has a long growing season, and the fact that this forest hasn't really been logged in a long time, some of it hasn't ever been logged at all, and you've got a recipe for extremely tall trees. Now, the thing about the nutrients these floodwaters bring is that they aren't restricted to a certain area of the park or a certain species of tree. The floodwaters inundate most of the park, like I said, and all tree species within it have access to the nutrients that they bring. That's why you see so many different tall trees in Congaree National Park rather than just a single species of tall tree. Overall, Congaree is home to 15 different trees that are the tallest of their species in the entire world. That's right, 
15 species of tree have no taller example anywhere in the world than those found here in Congaree National Park. This includes a gargantuan 170 foot tall loblolly pine, the tallest tree in the park that we know of. But Congaree doesn't just produce tall trees, it produces large trees as well. In fact, another nickname for Congaree National Park is the Forest of Champions because it is home to the largest concentration of champion trees in North America. Champion trees are designated with a point score that takes into account a tree's height in feet, its circumference in inches, and one-fourth of its crown spread in feet. You can have state champion trees, meaning they have the most points for a particular species in a given state, or national champion trees, meaning they have the most points for a particular species in the entire country. Congaree, the Forest of Champions, is home to 23 state champion trees and six national champion trees, including that 170-foot loblolly that I mentioned, which is 15 feet in circumference. In fact, Congaree is so dense with champion trees that even if a champion is felled, like many were during Hurricane Hugo in 1989, other champions are quickly found from other places in the floodplain to take their place. And to top it all off, we don't even know if we found all the champions in the park. There could be another giant out there, deep in the floodplain, unexplored, waiting to take its title as Congaree's next champion tree. Now, we've talked a lot about tall trees and big trees, but Congaree's floodplain dynamics also contribute to just a lot of trees, a lot of different types of trees, a lot of species in general. It's an incredibly rich and biodiverse ecosystem on the whole. Congaree is estimated to contain 1,220 different taxa, including 33 amphibians, 45 reptiles, 71 fish, 191 birds, 37 mammals, 328 terrestrial plants, 512 wetland plants, and 3 aquatic plants. It's one of the most biodiverse forests in the country, and I'm glad I've been able to share its wonders with you all here today. Wonders that are all thanks to those ever-important floods in this ever-important ecosystem. We tend to think of floods as a destructive force, and rightfully so, when they cause millions of dollars in damage and take human lives. But Congaree shows us that floods can also be a creative force, that they can give rise to incredible assemblages of life, unique ecosystem dynamics, and some of the tallest trees in the world. So, if you ever come to Congaree and it's flooded and you're disappointed that you're not going to get to see anything, just remember that, actually, you're seeing everything. You're seeing an ecosystem in full function, humming right along, doing what it's supposed to do, creating and sustaining life. When Congaree floods, you're seeing this park and its ecosystem as it's supposed to be. Also, you can just rent a canoe. It's the best way to see the park anyway. That's the way I do it most of the time. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode on a park near and dear to my heart. I love it so deeply and was excited finally, after all these years of the channel, to share its story with you. Let me know your thoughts on Congaree down in the comments below, and be nice down there. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more park stories, follow me on Instagram for pretty pictures, and direct support on Patreon is always appreciated. I'll see you next time, goodbye.